So I got my CPU Z and I'm going to stress my CPU. At the moment, you can see that it's idle at 40 degrees, which is perfectly fine. As soon as I press the stress button, so you will see the temperature climb up. 60, 70, 80, and then thermal throttle is going to cut in and help to reduce the damage to the CPU. So this is not normal because for a water-cooled um, PC, especially the 360 mil size of a radiator, the temperature will never do that. Now the heatsink is working because if I do unplug the um, power to the water pump, then it won't sit at 40 degrees anymore. So it's not completely not working, but it's just that you can see it's not cooling the CPU at all under stress. And that is why I have this problem. Even though the CPU is running at 80, this pipe is not even warm to touch and the radiator is not hot. So I know definitely that it is not working. So while I was doing some shopping, this is currently in my system, a MSI Core Liquid P360. Now this is the one which is at the moment £99. I think that's how much I paid when it was like, you know, December 2000. Uh, 22. So I only had it for about seven months or six months. I'm not sure if I have this uh, company before, but look at that price, 67 pound. So this is a kind of a budget friendly, and this is 360 size AM5 socket or AMD5. And we'll check that out. This one have RGB. This one doesn't. RGB boring that's not the reason why i would do shopping actually i would rather leave it alone because the computer just sit down there as long as it works but obviously it doesn't so what does 67 pound get you today right, i'm sorry i'm not in my studio so you know the picture quality and lighting quality might not be the best but this is what you get for your measly 67 pound now I know it's a 360 cooler, therefore the box will be big, but this is huge box. Addressable RGB lighting, universal SS2 mounting system, balanced fan, low resistant radiator. It's saying all the right thing in the box. Unlock chill force here. I like them. Instruction booklet. Let's take out the cooler straight away. There we go. This thing is huge. 360 cooler are huge. It's for 67 pound. I don't know. I think I'm going to say this the whole video. For 67 pound, this this is very very good value for money. Check that out. Please peel off before you use it. Look at that copper plate. Look amazing. So you got your usual connector here. It's got cover on this one, RGB, just in case if your motherboard doesn't support this, you don't use it and you cover it. And you got your connector for the pump. Unlike the MSI, the pump is actually, ooh, unless the MSI, the pump is actually on the heat exchange here, where the MSI, the pump is actually on the radiator itself. You got 320 um, millimeter fan. Each of them have RGB. And the heat sink is white, which actually go quite nice in my computer case. And this side you got some shiny letter, thermal right. The price is definitely right. And I think the heat exchange have RGB on top as well. Alright, let's leave it there for now. Pump mirror. I think it's a pump face. And in this box is what you need for different uh, motherboard mount. So you got your thermal paste from thermal right. This is a TF7 thermal paste. And all your fans can go into this adapter. So whichever motherboard you have, you have to use the right mount. And that is it, quite simple really. So I'm gonna start dismantle this. Now, before I take this out, I have to unplug all the uh, CPU fans and the pump and all the accessory stuff. So just to make sure that it can actually slide out. Mm -hmm. 
so that's so that's the MSI cooler and you can tell it's quite even on the thermal paste so I don't think that is because the thermal paste not being in contact with the CPU with my overheating I do think this is a faulty unit to install the Thermaltech um, cooler you got packets which label AMD and you got packets which label Intel now following the instructions on the booklet I need to take out the two black brackets replace it with the two bandy AM4 brackets with the spacer which is included So the next step is to install the cooler and then the last will be the head because I don't want to have to mess around with the head restricting where I want to go. Now the good thing about the thermal uh, rights is that everything is installed. So the fan is already attached to the heatsink and uh, the cabling is all dangling at the moment but they will be easier to route around the uh, motherboard slot as, should, as long as um, as long as the heat sink is mounted correctly so we come with this fan hub for easier installation so all the fan connect to this hub got three of the fan and then this one can connect to your motherboard header on the CPU fan and you got RGB stuff which needs to be connected in a minute okay so I put a generous P size on the CPU now there is some debate on what is the best way to put thermal paste for my many years of building computer I just squirt a big lump in the middle and let the CPU mount um, squash it down technical terms wash it down the only thing you have to make sure is when you install the CP, CPU cooler make sure it's squat down vertically you don't want to go in the side first or else you end up pushing pushing it aside instead of squashing it evenly even when you are screwing taking down the CPU make sure you do a few turn on each side one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Nine, ten. Seven, twelve. Just turn it until it doesn't go anymore. This kind of bracket, you can over tighten it if you're not careful. So we do try to avoid that. And the clever thing with the plate here, so on top of the pump is just for decoration purpose. So this is like a see-through window. It comes with a black one as well. I'm going to stick with white because I got a black and white film going on at the moment. But this one here, you can actually rotate. So it doesn't matter how you put your head. You can always have the logo on the right way. And it's magnetic, which is really, really cool. Okay, so here is the result. A lot brighter in the case because of the RGB which is absent from the MSI but that's not the reason why I changed it the reason is because it's not cooling my CPU so you can see all 320 mil fan on top which is RGB the pump itself the face is RGB the cable is white which is going really nicely so now with the new CPU cooler we try again we could stress the CPU right here now is idling at 38 as soon as I stress the CPU, is jumping up to 74, 75, 76, and then it stopped going up anymore. So it won't be thermal throttle until they are 90 degrees. 
but with the other cooler it jumps right up to 90 and this one never gone above 80 eventually when the heat sink if the heat sink saturated with heat then yes it might climb up even more and then the thermal throttle will cut in but at the moment there is no signs of that which is brilliant love to find a bargain on the internet which works and this is actually cheaper than the MSI so you know go figure I'm very happy with this purchase yep <coughs> there we go come back here right I'm very happy with this purchase the case look a lot nicer as well with the RGB so less boring yeah so thank you thermal rights for bringing out a budget version of this cooler so more of us gamma can enjoy a bit of cooling thank you very much for watching can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget bye bye